greatest force ever applied to move a vehicle. This is the cluster of rocket engines boosting the Saturn vehicle free of gravity, straight up. Saturn is the largest rocket ever produced by the United States. Not a military rocket. Saturn was designed solely as a space vehicle. It can carry multi-ton payloads into Earth orbit or to the moon. And the scientific space exploration by Saturn rockets will lead eventually to placing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. But all the missions planned for Saturn hinge on one essential element of space rocketry. If we fill a sphere with highly pressurized gases, there can be no action and reaction. The pressures are equal in all directions, and the gas remains motionless. But if a hole is cut in the sphere, the pressurized gas rushes to escape. Thus we have an imbalance of pressure in the sphere in these two directions. Similarly, if we fill a balloon with compressed air, there is a greater pressure within the balloon than outside. When we release the air within the balloon, the column of air escaping sets up a momentum going in one direction, and the reaction in the other direction acting as pressure on the interior of the balloon propels our little rocket. If we look at a representation of a rocket engine's thrust chamber, we see the same principle applied. Through combustion in the thrust chamber, great amounts of energy are released. Hot expanding gas escapes through the nozzle throat. Because of the design of the nozzle, the mass of escaping gas molecules is accelerated rapidly. This kinetic energy, bursting from the nozzle exit at supersonic speed, generates an enormous force. From the mass and acceleration of the gas flow is computed a basic measurement of rocket power, thrust. The reaction to this thrust is expressed in pressure against the top of the chamber here against the sides here and against the interior walls of the nozzle here. Forcing the thrust chamber and with it the entire body of the rocket upward. Oh, and one other thing. Many people in the past thought that the rocket required a solid body of atmosphere to push against in order to move. Incorrect. Okay, 
So here we're going to do a little bit of science to prove, once and for all, if, in fact, rockets move by pushing off atmosphere behind them, or pushing off of anything behind them, or if they move through Newton's third law, which states everything has an equal and opposite reaction, or every action has an equal and opposite reaction, and by just the process of expelling something out of the back, you gain forward momentum. So, we'll add our weights to the cart, and we'll redo our experiments to make sure it can move under its own weight. Test one. Who it was observed, it would also be who of us to observe the fact that with added weight, it did move significantly slower than it without weight, which we can test again by removing the pennies. Let's verify that it is 29 grams lighter. 107. So that corroborates with our 104 gram carts and the 100 or 103 gram balloon, making 107. So, without weight, with weight. significantly slower. In fact, it couldn't even propel itself off of our testing surface. So, that was two tests with the weight, so let us test again for three. Four. And finally, five. So, we know for a fact that it can move itself forward by using just the force of this balloon. So, what happens when we introduce our vacuum to the back of it? So, test number one. Movement was still observed. Test number two. Movement was still observed. I did notice it was a little bit slower than without the vacuum. Test number three. <laughs> Movement was still observed. Um, seemed to have been about the same distance as without the vacuum. Four. No movement observed. Five.
movement observed. And since we had uh, one test that did not move, let's do a few more just to make sure that we are getting accurate data and to see if it happens any more times. So let's do an extra three to six.